so I smoked the entrance. There's some nice activity. Here. That and way we can use your other bases. Uh, they like to go in and out of this little opening here. This in little my, knot? Uh, this little hole that okay. I drilled for drainage in my bottom, slatted bottom board. Okay. Give them a moment while we. I'm gonna come in out of the flight path. I'll do that too. And here we go. So we see some um, bee parts up here. Oh. Looks like. Huh. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, yeah, we see some bee parts. This may just be leftovers from winter, from the winter. And we'll put your top board here. Okay. Excellent. So put the invert the inner cover. So automatically we see we see some bees up here on the frames of one and two. Um, looks like they're starting to draw out a little on frame one. I, uh, there are some bees over here on the frame uh, frame nine. Oh, 10 but predominantly over here one and two and then everything else is this is just undrawn uh, foundation so mm -hmm. we can take this off here kitty corner okay now we have a nice yeah, uh, nice Coverage. We see bees on all 10 frames, so 4, 8, 9, 10. I usually count from left to right when I uh, approach the hive from the rear. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're drawing comb, they're working it. Um, so now we're down into box 3. So 3 10 frame boxes is equivalent to two deeps so these frames were empty um three weeks ago i put the top these two top ones on okay frames were empty oh, why don't you uh swing around the back and i'll show a technique so this is a standard hive tool looks like a little crowbar and when you first uh, crack the box what you want to do is leverage down from the back and make sure you're lifting up only the the frames in this box. You don't want to lift mm. this box and a few more frames in there because then that's just a whole lot of extra weight. Oh, this is nice and full. Okay. So we're gonna look at the bottom first. Gonna look. I don't see any brood in any of this burr comb or, or this oh, ladder comb. Uh -huh which is between boxes two and three. This is all nectar. This is all, um, if it's capped, it's honey. But the bees are already starting to feed and uh, this box was heavy. So this box, oh. is, this box is entirely um, filled with nectar. Just looking at the sides of the frames over here, they haven't capped it yet, at least here in the center. Mm -hmm. 
just looking. So the reason I put it on its side and look at the bottom is because this is where you would expect to see swarm cells. Oh. So this tells me that there's going to be very little brood in in this box, that this is basically just going to be uh, nectar. The weight of it felt definitely like nectar. It was heavy. Um, so you have three 10 frame boxes. This is the top of your uh, the second deep. And so this is the minimum configuration that we recommend going into winter. Okay. Put it down for now. Nor, um, we have a squirt bottle with some sugar water. It's not one to one. One to one is too thick. It's, uh, it will clog them, but uh, it's what was it? A quarter cup of sugar? A quarter cup in, in that. Quarter cup in about, was it a pint of water? So um, this is what I would be normally screwing the bees, keeping them nice and calm. But because there was so much nectar in the bridge cone between the uh, boxes two and three, that they have something to do to keep them busy. So we can uh, dispense with the sugar water right now and just let them, let them be. So... I'm going to take my smoker. Make sure it's still going. I did a good job of lighting it, so that's good. Okay. So now we're going down into boxes one and two. This is where I would expect to, uh, the brood to be. Right in here. Uh, spanning from the box two down to box one. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> Very heavy. Extremely heavy on the right side. Okay, now we can start to see some some larva here. This is where the brood um, on tops of frames is where you'd see start to see uh, some drone brood. And reach over. Give them some squirts of sugar water to keep them busy. And take a look at these. These. Again, you see some drone pupa. Some people do. Um, look at this. This, this is, is so kind of bulging. This shaded is shaded here to see. Oh, okay. Um, but I think it'll be okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so we see some larva here. I'm not seeing any sort of um, uh, I'm not sort of seeing any sort of uh, mites oh, good. on these. But that doesn't mean anything. It just means that um, we don't see them. We don't see them. Looks like you had a, a queen. You introduced oh, a queen, or is I this had, from the? I didn't do it very well. This from the package. Yes, probably the queen cell. The queen cage. Which I uh, accidentally okay. squished putting it in. Okay. Not the best technique. Well, it looks like you have got a queen in there right now. And I thought I saw right here that looks like a queen cup, queen cell. Where, where is it? Oh, right, right here. Oh, yes. Queen cell. I'm looking into it. I don't sure. see any. Uh, that's okay. Oh, can, there it is. Yep. It's right here. The bees no, are visiting it, but I don't see any royal jelly in it. I don't see any sort of issues right now. Okay. So we, we can set this queen cage on its side. We can set this down. This is extremely, extremely heavy up here on the right side. <clears throat> That's just capped honey. Uh-huh. Okay. So as we look, this is... Uh, we're, not as many bees over here in these three frames. A lot of bees over here. This is where uh, we're going to take a look for brood. So usually we try to take out 
nice tight fit in here. So we're loosening the propolis on frame two. Okay, so we have Looks like it's getting backfilled um, with nectar. So this is uh, this was brewed. There's uh, I see pollen in here and nectar. They're backfilling this area with nectar. And have some brewed area brewed on this frame. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna lay that over here on the side and okay so now we have some space to move in see some space to, to do stuff so we had some empty drawn frames over here this frame this bo box is full of bees Looks like a decent laying pattern. And they've got cells down so, on the bottom sticking out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what we're seeing so far is brood down here on the bottom. So there's probably brood up here in the next box up top. I'm seeing brood in both boxes, so this is going in. Nice pattern, nice full frame. What I might think of doing is taking a frame over here that's getting drawn out hmm. and maybe it may not be full of honey from this top box if it doesn't have nectar inserting it down here so the queen has some space to lay. So we've had a very, very dry June, very dry. It's been near drought conditions. Um, thankfully, at least this part of Middlesex County had uh, some thunderstorms come through. We had, what, an inch of rain or more mm -hmm. come through on Sunday. We had another storm and some light rain uh, the other night. So um, the, the plants that are, um, plants that are producing nectar now have water to produce the nectar so uh, it's a question of what do you do now we have we're at the end of june we have maybe a week or two more of the main nectar flow do you add another box do you let the bees go with what they're doing um in this case because Everything's so bound. I might move this empty box that was starting to get drawn in its foundation, move that from box four down to box three so that they have frames of honey up top and that'll give them some space and that'll give them um, some things to do. And again, just looking at the side here, we have beautiful, beautiful uh, cap brood in here the bees are you know pretty well behaved right now mm -hmm. um we've got a good brood pattern what you do want to see uh is a good brood pattern come down to your bottom box see where the bees are you want to see a good brood pattern and you also want to see um some eggs some larvae brood in all stages of development so we have a good brood laying pattern the queen's doing a really good job in here. We've got a good population. This is a package that was installed 
Middle of April. Middle of April. April 12th, maybe. Yeah. We have some uh, comb from the bottom. The bees are drawing down to the slotted rack beneath. The slotted rack. And that's uh, something to help with um, swarming. It gives the place for the excess workers to be. Um, so here, here we have a lovely frame. You have cap brood, and then you have some older larva, older larva, small, getting smaller, getting smaller. And then this is against some uh, wax foundation. So I can't say that I see eggs, but I see really small larva. Here. So this is good. We know the queen's been here. So you don't need to see the queen. You just need to see the presence of the queen. Here we have a, a, another side there. Um, you have some empty frames. Uh, empty cells, so the queen has space to lay. They're starting to backfill some of it. So again, you want to give them space for the queen to lay, space for them to store comb, uh, store nectar. So at this point, I'm going to leave a space. We're gonna have to move these boxes, maybe take a frame, put it in here, and then start building it back up. So, beautiful comb. Um, I don't see any queen cells down here, but... Uh, they need some space. They need some space. Need some space. So we're gonna give them space to uh, draw. We're gonna give them some space, uh, hopefully for the queen to lay. Okay. So this is all heavy, heavy, heavy. I'm tempted to. Uh, we're here. Why don't? Why don't we? So let's just tilt this bottom box up. See what we see oh, at the yeah. bottom. See what if they're building all the way into the slotted frame or something. Yeah. Slotted rack. What do you call that? Yeah. This is a slotted rack, right, right above a solid bottom board. This is from my queen release. Yeah. So if you if you come around this side, you can see. Yeah. You know they're they're definitely looking for space. They're looking for they're they're building down from the bottom of that. I don't see any queen cells here on the bottom. I don't see any queen cups, so that's good. But we do want to make sure that the queen has space. So. Kathy is planning on treating uh, in, in a day or two. For mites. Treating for mites. So we're not going to uh, do a, um, a mite check on this hive. Uh, tune in next week and we'll have a, uh, uh, we'll do a mite check on a colony next week. Um, and how to do that, especially when you don't have any um, rubbing alcohol. So, I am going to take this box, move it over here, take that box, move it, take a frame that's getting drawn over here. Remember frames one and two in box four were, uh, were getting drawn. If those don't have nectar on it, if they just started drawing them, we're going to put that in and so that they have space to expand. Here. 
Oh, dear Lord. Which oh, it's heavy. Heavy. Okay. heavy. Heavy, heavy. That's why I went to the smaller boxes. <laughs> yep. This is why I went to um, 10 frames, uh, uh, 8 oh. frames uh -huh. on, on the smaller boxes. Uh -huh. So here we have box 3. It's getting drawn. Now, um, these are white frames. White frames right. are traditionally what you would um, have, say, for honey. Uh -huh. So, but these are drawn, and it really depends on uh, you, Catherine. Do you want to keep these for honey frames, traditionally, I, or does it matter if you, there's some brood in them? I don't think it, I didn't know it mattered. Okay, yeah, I, it, it so doesn't matter. Me. It's up to you. Okay. So, traditionally, white, uh, white frames or yellow frames would be for honey. Black frames would be for uh, the brood area, mm -hmm. so it's easier to see eggs. Uh-huh. But... They're fully drawn. This is box three, and at least they're they're partially drawn. Let's see if I can take out a frame here and see what they're doing. Because if it's it has nectar in it, then we'll we'll leave it with nectar. Yeah, this is this is I I can already feel. I don't even have to look at it. This is nectar. It, it it's nice and heavy. So this is this frame is is, is nectar. Next frame. This frame is nectar. So they're filling this with nectar. I'm gonna uh, just say I'm gonna leave this as is. Um, they have space to store. They have space to draw some more out in this. I'm already feeling. Yeah, they have nectar in all of these, so it doesn't make sense to try to move that down to the brood area. Oh, you can, okay. that smell. I'm the smelling honey. it. They're curing it. <laughs> uh -huh. They're curing it. It just smells lovely. Okay. I'm going to turn this on its side over here. There's frames one and two here in this box four. Now you can start to hear them. Start yeah, to, you know, right, they're roaring. Right. Um, making more noise now. Making more noise. It's time to start thinking about closing them up. Ah. Close them up now while they're well behaved. Okay, so this is a yellow uh, frame, but they have some of it drawn, some of it getting filled with nectar. This frame. So we have foundation. It doesn't really matter uh, one way or another. Now, the reason not to do this, again, with a yellow frame or a white frame down in your brood area is because it's harder to see eggs. Eggs are white, white on white. <laughs> it's very difficult to see. Mm -hmm. It's, it, 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 they're easier to see on, okay, yeah, they're starting to draw this out. It's just, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, if that, up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're just starting to coat it with wax. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that down here in the brood area. And hopefully <clears throat> they will start to, um, this will give them something to do. So at this point, you can either smoke them a lot, give them some squirts of sugar water instead. You don't want to over smoke them. You know, once they're 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 going, they're, it's not easy to get them calmed down. So I'm gonna put this here. So we have nine frames in here. So remember frame four, 
when Kathy comes in, in in another day or so, they should hopefully start to draw this out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Definitely in, in a week. Now we do ha ha we're, we're we're against the clock. We're against the clock on the end of the, the nectar flow, mm -hmm. which is traditionally around July 4th to July 15th. This year has been really strange because of the late winter. And now I'm gonna so these are called Hoffman self spacing frames because the end bars of two frames together is is B space. So this is the quarter inch to three eighths inch. So you'll see there's bees on the face of this frame, bees on the face of this frame, back to back, and that's that's B space. You start violating that with this cavern. If we were to put this box back in without it, Nature bores a vacuum and so do bees. They will start to fill that up. So <laughs> take advantage of the self-spacing frames and these nice end bars, push them together, maintain bee space. Okay, so we have box one, this is box two. Oh Lord. That's the heavy one. This is heavy. So try to get it on one corner and fold it down, put it down, but don't put it down forcefully all at once. Give them, try, give, try to give the bees space to get out. Okay. Now, again, this is box two, it's very heavy. We have a brood area. If we take out a frame here, we can put in a frame. This other comb that's not drawn, see if we can give them something to do. Is this right in the middle of the brood area? This is probably right in the middle of the brood area, but it's very heavy, so uh -huh. I'm guessing that there's lots and lots of nectar here. Let's take a look. Walk now, normally what I would do is to take out frames one or ten, or the second frame two or two or nine, and then take one frame out and space them apart and then start going in. You know, the bees are definitely heavy from these frames over, so they're favoring this side of the colony. But these are, uh, some of these frames are distended, They've got a lot of um, honey on them. Actually, I may be able to get frame 10 out. So let's see if I can get frame 10 out. So the queen is, uh, isn't is very likely, and I'm never gonna say definitely not, but she's less likely to be over here on frame 10 where there's lots and lots of um, nectar or honey. What do you see? Oh, I, I knew what it was as soon as I started to lift it because it's lots, it's very heavy. Lots and lots of honey. So this frame is capped. The frame next to it is capped. Let's see if we can start moving because if this is all capped, we're going to move the uncapped, move the capped up or move frames that are capped up and then move these frames. These frames aren't capped. So we'll, we'll move these frames down and then we have the totally undrawn frames. The, the problem is we're at the end of the main nectar flow and they may not draw these frames. Mm -hmm. So we want them to cap this. You want to go into winter with at least three 10 frame boxes. The uncapped 
if they're not drawn before mm -hmm. summer hits, they're not going to draw them. Hmm. They won't. They won't draw them. So it won't do you any good to have them in there. So it. it um, ah. It might behoove you to remove them, but not right now, because right now you have a nice populous hive. You want space for them to to be on, especially if you get a nice thunderstorm come through. All the bees are gonna fly back home. Again, heavy, oh, could capped. feel, that's totally capped. Good mm -hmm. to go. It's good to go if you have a surplus. This would be perfect if it was up in box four, box five, down here in box two, three, this is the bee's honey. This uh -huh. isn't your honey. Yep. This isn't, and I'm not saying this to Kathy, I'm just saying this to the club. They need this honey to get through the summer. They need this honey to get through the winter. Leave the honey for them. You know, we had a, a, had a near drought. They're not, haven't been bringing in as much. That just means we don't get as big a, a we don't get as much honey this year. It's a lot cheaper to keep, it's a lot cheaper to keep your bees over winter and, and, and get a nice, um, you know, if the weather behaves next year, it, it, it's cheaper than trying to start off all from scratch. So here, what do we see? We see red nectar. So Kathy mentioned that she had some honey from a hive that didn't overwinter. This is purple. That's, this is Japanese knotweed. Then you have a nice inner ring of darker honey. This is probably... Um, this may be goldenrod or, or, or something fall, something very dark. I don't see a color cast to it. If it was green, I'd say it's um, Jap uh, purple loose strife. But this is, per this is red. So this is, again, that's what Rick really likes to make his mead out of, the, the purple, the red. Knotweed, the knotweed honey. Knotweed honey. This is partially capped. Capped on this side, has some bridge comb. It's getting filled in here along the bottom. Some drone brood here along the bottom. And again, we can move these frames up, move some of these partial frames down and give them some space to lay. What do we see next to it? Well, immediately, we see some nice uh, brood frame. So this is your brood area. Bees are bees. You know, usually they have the honey on the outside and they have the brood on the inside. Every hive is different. Every hive is an individual. We have the brood area right here. These six frames, for some reason, they like this area. Um, the sun's setting over there. So this is south. This south, is the, right. That's the south side. This is south. This is, they like the southern exposure. This is where they're building out. So. We can move some of these uh, partially framed hives. We can put uh, this frame of brood right here. You can put this right here. Put this right here. Put in some of these partially drawn frames. Uh, uh, partially um, uh, uncapped nectar here to get them to cap it. We could possibly move this over, but the bees are favoring this. Mm -hmm. Don't fight the bees. If the bees want this, this is the setup that they want, let them be. Don't force your vision of what should be happening with what the bees are. Try to work with what they are giving you. Hmm. So we need three frames here. We can take from box four. The bees seem to have calmed down a bit. I guess they like that sugar water. Or yeah, they figured we're not going away. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they, uh, it, they're not really 
extremely mad yet. So we have this frame. It's starting to get drawn here. Give them something to do. This is going to give them some space to lay, space to actually. This is uh, drawn. It's getting filled in with nectar, I think. Yeah, it's getting filled in with nectar. We'll turn this to the outside. So if they start drawing this, this gives them space to lay in. So the queen has some, some more room. And in fact, you know what? Uh, no, I'm gonna leave it, leave it as is. Actually, this is where they, they are. This is where they need the space. So I'm gonna move everything over. Now they have definitely, they're favoring this side. This is where the bees are. Mm -hmm. This is where they're going to draw. I'm going to confirm, pull this frame out. Remember, this box was heavy. Yeah, they have nectar in this side, nectar in this side, so I can even start to move this over a bit. So rather than frame one, move this over to frame two. Okay, let's see what's what. So this frame is nectar, they're putting nectar in. Now we're starting to get a little <laughs> now they're getting noisy again. I can always see them favoring this side too when I look. They cluster on the outside here. Okay. They go in that hole there. It's interesting. Yeah. Giving it a little more space. Yeah, we have pollen here. Pollen. So they have pollen. Where, where do they need pollen? They need pollen for the brood. They need pollen next to the brood. So I'm going to move this over. This frame isn't fully drawn with nectar. It's only the sort of center third. So I'm going to put the pollen here. Now, there's brood here. They have space to expand the laying area. Okay. Now we can take a frame. What do we have? Eight, four, eight. So we need two frames here. everything over. We need two frames over here that are, that's uncapped. Here, beautiful, it's getting drawn. Okay, so what do we see here? We see some bridge comb, mm -hmm. some burr comb. It's going out from the face. It's going into the frame of the next, the next frame. I'll show you where that is. You can let this go, but if you let this go, this is gonna cause a problem because they're gonna have a bridge between these two frames and anytime you remove this, it's gonna rip. You could have honey. If you open this later on during the uh, nectar dearth, it can cause robbing. So we're going to take, remove this right now. 
We're gonna move this right now and try to uh, a, a, avoid an issue later on. I'll put this here for the bees to start clearing out. Okay. So we have some distension, uh, distended over here. I might take this off as well. Just put it, oh, we'll need to pick that up and not leave that in here. Okay. So the, this face is nice and clean. And where was that? Over here. So again, totally drawn out, getting filled in, but it's not capped yet. Here, this is where that other side of the face was. You can see where it's dipped in here. That other comb was here going in. Straighten it out now while well, it's a small problem before it becomes a larger problem. Turn it this way. Okay. We'll take this put it on top of box four for now. Now we, now we have box three. So you have brood here. You have some nectar, one frame of uh, nectar, frame over here, these frames that haven't been uh, capped yet. Now we'll put on the main nectar. <coughs> Take one of these frames of capped honey, just put it here. Play this on its side. <laughs> That comb. Look at that face. That's it just is. white. That's really nice. This is capping wax. When you uncap it to extract it, this is what you take off. It's just beautiful. It's light. This is what the best candles are made out of. Frames are all getting drawn out, getting filled. So, use a uh, use your hive tools. If you have a standard tool, what you can do is insert it here. Make the space here. You can also do the same thing with the J hook here. Slide the end bars over. When everything's loose, you've broken the propolis seals up here on the rabbit on the uh, frame rest. You can slide, start to move things over. Nope, there it goes. Okay. Actually, I might have the, the capped honey on the outside here. So we have a nice capped frame. So just once again, look at this frame. You don't see any disten distensions. It's not distended anywhere on either side of the face. This is what you want when you go to extract your honey when you want. Um, because if this was bulging in one area and you go to put this in the extractor, guess what? It's The extractor uh -huh. only has a narrow space for these frames to go in. It's going to come off anyways. Mm -hmm. So take care of these issues before uh, it, it before it becomes a lot bigger. Just like any, any anything with bees. If it needs something done, do it now. Because if, it, if you wait, it just becomes a bigger and bigger headache. 
Okay. And here. Here. This isn't quite down all the way. Frames are in, push them together. Here, here, this box, this frame, everything is nice and tight now. So, depends on what your philosophy is. My philosophy is that bees come first. If there's an excess, then the excess is for me. So I have a, 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 a setup similar in terms of bee population in terms of honey. For me, I wouldn't take any honey from this. Or if I took a frame, I might just crush and strain it because it doesn't really make sense to do uh, simply one frame of honey through an extractor. It's too much work to go through and uh, set up and get going and then clean up for a single frame. So I would simply crush and strain it. But if this top box was filled with honey and everything else was as is that we had seen say go ahead extract this super of honey but right now as uh, I'd probably say leave it for the bees keep an idea uh, uh, keep your treatments on do your mite counts mm -hmm. okay so Uh, you could sort of brush them up. I just mm -hmm. leave them. They'll start to work mm -hmm. their way back down. Mm -hmm. I'm turning this around. Why am I turning this around? So, the hole is in the front. <laughs> the hole is in the front. Now is the hole supposed every, to be every, the every other single, way? Every single uh, manufacturer does something else. My manufacturer that I get my bee boxes from doesn't have a hole. So, um, I don't have to worry about that. But this is also, so it's shaped like an igloo. In the summer, usually what we do is turn this upside down, even this way, all the even so it looks all like the a cone. summer, uh, a swimming pool. But mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It's fine as is. Um, it's up to you, Kathy. Do you have a preference on which way it goes? What, what do you do with this that's on the top? If They're just going to leave that there. They'll leave it there. Yeah. Um, um, we can just I know flip it's it supposed over. to be like an uh, yeah, a swimming just, pool. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't it really like matter. I, okay. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of difference. I have um, these on to try and give them a yep. bit of um, more a ventilation, bit of ventilation on the top. We've had some hot days. Yep, we certainly have. 
Okay. Then the top goes on. We're gonna the telescoping out of cover is a little bit uh, larger, so you pull this back so that that top entrance is closed down. This is a good sized colony. They have a, a, enough workers that they could probably police it, um, but you're probably better off just giving them fewer fewer entrances to deal with. Ah. So you pulled it back so that the I pulled it back to close off to the close entrance. it. Ah. But that's just me. Uh huh. If you decide you want it open, then you can just. When you come in to do your treatment tomorrow or on Sunday, mm -hmm. then just just fix it, reset it. You know, I see them using the bottom most. They don't yep. go into the top of this hive much. So we uh, lit the smoker. I'll have a, a smoker demo on the next time. I just want Kathy to uh, feel this on your arms. I don't feel anything. Yeah, it's nice, cool smoke. Mm -hmm. When you have a properly lit smoker, it's not going to start flaming up and be really heavy this is a, a 10 inch smoker um you 10 inches are, are perfectly fine you can get away with 10 inch or 7 inch doesn't really matter um i suppose you could smoke them over here and they'll start to go down but you have the bees uh, why don't you come in for a close-up what do we see here we see bees with the abdomens up Huh. Releasing your uh, Nazanov, saying this is home, come on down. Uh -huh. You start to see from where it was earlier, where there were a ton of bees all over the face of all four boxes. They're already starting to migrate back down into the box. And later, in an hour or so, there'll be maybe just a handful of bees out. And by nightfall, all the bees will be back in. So... And then that's it. This hive is uh, is really going well. We didn't see any swarm cells in it. Um, it's well situated for going into winter, uh, into the summer dearth right now. Uh huh. Um, I'm not as familiar with this area. I'm a couple miles away. I assume you have some sort of a fall flow. Oh, the goldenrod, yeah, I golden guess. Rod and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, again, we had the. Um, the fewer boxes up here when you come in I mm -hmm. might uh, take a look at the long-term weather mm -hmm. if we're gonna have some rain come through mm -hmm. because it's been very very dry if we have some rain coming through I might reverse these two boxes remember this box we had the fully drawn out capped honey over here and then everything else was uh, wasn't capped mm -hmm. but it was uh, getting filled I might reverse these two boxes because this is all undrawn and that would be a way to get them to to draw some more uh -huh. but it really depends on you've got a decent population in here I don't think there's very much chance in them drawing and filling it at this point uh -huh. but if you wanted to th get them to draw some wax to give them a head start for next year mm -hmm. or start a package off and have some pre pre-drawn, semi-drawn comb going into next year, that's a way to do it. So uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you for Kathy for hosting this uh, hive opening and we'll probably uh, close out until next time. If you have questions, please go on to the online form. Uh, that way, when you uh, see answers, everybody else will, uh, everybody will see the answers as opposed to sort of emailing uh, me directly or Phil, Philip or Ed or any of the other um, sort of veteran beekeepers in the club. If you ask questions on Facebook or on the uh, members only form, more people get to uh, share with the responses. So thank you and good night. Thank you, Tony.